नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टूडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट द इंडिया ई यू रिलेशन ना इंडिया एंड द यूरोपियन यूनियन शेयर अ वाइब्रेंट स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप विच हैज बिन विटनेसिंग स्ट्रॉन्ग ग्रोथ विद वाइडर एंड डीपर कोऑपरेशन इन पॉलिटिकल एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स क्लाइमेट एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी digital and technology aspects as well as people to people ties now the india eu leaders meeting held in may last year set new milestones with the decision to resume trade talks and the launch of india eu connectivity partnership president of the european commission ursula von der leyen is on two day official visit to india where both sides received the, re- reviewed the progress on various aspects of uh, the relationship and further intensify the multifaceted partnership with the European Union in today's episode of perspective we will discuss and analyze all aspects of this relationship and where exactly is india eu bilateral relations uh, moving ahead now for more on this we joined by a distinguished panel of experts let me first introduce them to you beginning with we have with us uh, Ms Alicia Garcia Herrero she is a senior fellow with the European think tank Bruegel we are also joined by Dr Jagannath Panda director for uh, Europe Asia Ycaps in Japan and uh, Mr Manjeet Singh Puri is also joining us he is the former deputy permanent representative of India to the United Nations uh, welcome uh, all of you to sunset television i'll uh, begin with you uh, first dr panda and let's uh, first start by understanding uh, you know the context in which this visit is taking place and also the times uh, during which this visit is taking place because it becomes really significant given the geopolitical uh, you know circumstances and happenings uh, which have been going on uh, it it is indeed important to understand uh, the the underlying context of uh, india uh, eu relations the the relations between uh, these two sides oh yes the the visit of the european uh, top representative vj significant visit and it has to be understood in three contexts one the kind of political environment we are currently watching in europe particularly arriving uh, out of the ukraine and russia uh, war context but i think uh, to that effect this visit of the european um, uh, top leadership is, uh, is significant in the sense that it allows europe and india to sit together and uh, take a stock analysis of the new environment the security environment the climate of uh, geopolitics that is emerging uh, throughout europe and asia the number two is that uh, this visit is taking place at a time when uh, europe had uh, launched its uh, indo pacific strategy you know few months back uh, uh, from to 2019 2020 onwards mainstream european countries are actually talking about indo pacific mm-hmm. there is now a official indo pacific strategy is there from eu uh, and the strategic compass has just been released and to that effect i think india figures much highly in european union's uh, strategic um, environment and assessment and uh, this visit is critical to that effect to talk about the indo pacific politics the third point here is that if we talk about the ground realities be it the connectivity issues be it the infrastructure partnerships be it uh, the partnership is in, in areas like energy climate change sustainable uh, development and i think this visit of the european top leadership allows both uh, both the leadership from india and eu to sit together and prepare a ground blueprint how to take it forward okay so taking the geopolitics the security environment and the the, the approach that european union is having towards indo pacific factoring india and india's versatile foreign policy where eu is emerging as a critical actor keeping all of this thing in mind this visit by the european top representative is a is a critical visit it's a significant visit and uh, it actually puts eu india relationship into a a good note in into a good framework to begin with okay okay Let, let's also understand uh, the the european perspective here uh, alicia i'd like to bring you in here you know how is this relationship viewed across uh, the the european uh, union or uh, you know uh, various uh, countries which are part of the european union because uh, it's it's going to be really important uh, from here onwards the way both sides will decide to move ahead on various aspects and and it's not just limited to just trade and commerce or economy Well I think this is a very very good time for India EU relations and in fact nobody expected to be frank that uh, negotiations would resume in May as they have May last year because they stalled for 
quite a number of reasons, as you know, in the past in 2012. So, so why they presumed, even before Ukraine, we, we have to understand that it's not really uh, coincidental because Europe is looking for alliances because of Ukraine. No, it's, it's the reason is quite different. It's a structural. And that structural reason is that other than these two hegemons, these big hegemons, the EU and India are big too. It's just that they don't behave as you know, great power competition. So we have that in common. And I think that's uh, in, extremely important because the rest of the world is also watching uh think in the case of europe of course we're not a nation but we have a big single market and in the case of india uh, they're looking at these big big economies that can counteract counterbalance a uh, great power competition so i think the fact that uh, the eu and india come together in this counterbalancing of, of a much more aggressive, if I may say, approach okay. to international politics from the US and China is extremely positive for the world in terms of you know, reforms and, and a liberal order uh, in, in, in a different way from, from the US understanding of that liberal order. So I think it's, it's a very good timing for EU uh, India relations and the Europeans do believe in this in these relations as, as you see we've come up with a new um, source of uh, cooperation this EU India economic and technology council which is kind of a similar okay. uh, cooperation as we have with the US uh, recently, the very same type of council. So I think these are great news because we can go beyond trade, okay. as you said, beyond investment. We can talk about standards, we can talk about technology, we can talk about all kinds of other cooperation tools for us. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so it looks like there are a lot of prospects uh, when we are you know, are trying to understand the importance of uh, this relationship from both sides. Uh, let me bring in uh, Ambassador Puri here as well. Uh, uh, Ambassador Puri, you've been, uh, you know, India's representative to European Union as well. Uh, just, just to make us understand uh, the, the significance of, of this uh, relationship, uh, because it's not just about uh, uh, trade and commerce, as Alicia was also referring to, but also in, in today's changing geopolitical situation, um, a multipolar world, it becomes really important both for India and the European countries uh, to, to work together. Vishal, thank you very much. So let me try and if you don't mind, put your question on the head. Without doubt, it's economics and economics should be the driver. That's what actually marries the European Union with India. India is on its way to becoming one of the world's largest economies. The European Union, taken together, is the second largest economy on the, if the world, larger, by the way, than China. Uh, secondly, we have a fantastic and massive trade relationship, not only from today. European Union is one of our largest trading partners. The European Union is the largest investor in India. And without doubt, setting of standards, ideas on climate change, renewable energy, each of these one, the two sets of economies which gel with each other, or at least the economy which gels best with the Indian economy, uh -huh. is the European Union. So let's be very clear on that. Now we can come to the geopolitics. They are important. They are important both as what uh, Mr. Jagannath Panda said, as, as well as what Alicia said. One is this issue of China. So there was COVID and a realization, even in Europe, that China was a hegemon. It wasn't just a benign rise as was taking place. This is now also something which is in the minds of the people in Europe. Indeed, let me point out to you that an EU-China investment agreement was agreed towards the end of 2020. It's really not seeing the light of the day. Okay. Mostly because of an issue at the people's level reflected in the European Parliament. Then comes the issue of Russia. That's a bit of a complicated issue. Because in terms of taking our relations forward with the European Union, especially on free trade, we also need to think in terms of sentiment in Europe. And there, I'm afraid, while the good and the discerning will understand that this is a relationship that needs to be taken forward, people will ask the questions of, are you with us or are you not? You know, these are factors that all of us need to understand. Having said this, of course, the Indo-Pacific is important. All these things are important. But I am glad that the Raisina Dialogue invited uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, 
who I might tell you is really the most powerful person in the European Union and mm -hmm. as things stand, especially in terms of leading its secretariat and its institutional arrangement. There is, of course, the president of the European Council and so on and so forth. And without any doubt in my mind, the impetus that can be given, and you know, India and EU have had summits from the year 2000 onwards. Uh, last year in May, there was a summit of Mr. Modi with all the leaders of the So all those are there are processes. But her coming here at this time, when the geopolitics, economics are such, that there is a realization, hopefully on both sides, that the multipolarity which they both represent, okay. you know, in a sense is in jeopardy, and they both need to cooperate and collaborate Indeed. to take this forward. For me, nothing would be more important than somehow getting the bilateral trade and investment agreements, although they are now two separate agreements, the trade agreement and the investment agreement forward. I have little doubt that while for the EU, a massive economy would tend to open up, it is really for India that there would be a game-changing element of being able to get one of the technological superpowers in the world mm -hmm. to become partners of India. Okay. I think this visit is important, its timing is important, and it's something that we should really use to push ahead on serious substantive matters. And in my views, without doubt, economics is it. Okay, okay. So geopolitics is important, but economy, as Mr. Puri is pointing out, uh, does remain the cornerstone of this relationship. Alicia, I'd like to bring you back in here now that we are talking about economy again. And, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, economy, trade and commerce, the, the question is, uh, in, in, in your view or, or from the point of view of uh, the European Union, what are the key tangible uh, possible achievements uh, in the near future when we are talking about uh, taking the economic relationship to the next level? There are uh, quite a few immediate uh, things that I think Europe can bring to the table. Uh, the first is investment. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the EU is the, the first, if we exclude, of course, uh, tax haven and, and, you know, Mauritius, basically, but that's money. We don't know where it's then eventually heading, but we exclude that. Uh, the EU is the largest investor, even excluding the UK in in. India. But what is most important, learning uh, from China, the EU invests in manufacturing. So what, what the EU brings to the table, brought to the table in China is manufacturing. And I think that's really a very nice uh, complementarity with India. I think uh, the, the ability to create jobs and to reshuffle the value chain which is now so dependent on China and with everything uh, and all of the things that are happening in China at the moment, I think it's, it's a, a perfect timing to offer our companies a different venue. This is why <clears throat> I keep on saying it is timely and in a sector that is very complementary to India's needs, given the rising population. And I think the, the, the very productive um, uh, characteristics of employment in the manufacturing sector. So I think this is why the the link is 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 so timely and and could be so productive for both. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Doc, Dr. Jagannath Pana, do you agree that uh, you know both sides, uh, India and European Union, are uniquely placed right now to to uh, you know uh, to complement each other in terms of fulfilling each other's needs and requirements? Definitely yes. Uh, I do agree that. Uh, uh, I think the kind of disconnect is happening from China because all this while European uh, Union's connections with China was very strong. Today, for the first time, what we are seeing for the last two, three years, there is a disconnect is happening uh, from its China connect. And this focus is on more on India, Japan, and on the Indo-Pacific. So to that extent, uh, this is a very welcome development between European Union and India. And I think the second point also what we need to understand, what uh, Ambassador Puri rightly pointed out, I think it is the trade and economic connect that is really at the end of the day really matters. And this is the significant change we are seeing in Indian foreign policy. Today, India's foreign policy is becoming much more uh, global in its uh, economic outbreaks. Today, we are signing FTAs uh, with many other countries in the world, not only in Asian regions, but outside Asia. And I think uh, signing an FTA with the European Union and trying to revitalize the, the date talk, which, uh, which was stuck for some time, is a welcome initiative. And okay. Prime Minister Modi's 
you know, forthcoming visit to some of these Scandinavian countries uh, adds to that. So today, I think both India and EU are realizing that there are huge untapped potentials in terms of taking forward this partnership, not only in terms of trade and economies, but also how to translate this trade and economic ties into geopolitical realities and uh, trying to connect it with the Indo-Pacific, okay. the Asian politics. And therefore, um, the president of the EU's uh, uh, you know, uh, president's visit to India is a, definitely is a significant development and it gives a future direction to India-EU relations. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that uh, geopolitics part again. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go back to Alicia a bit later. But Ambassador Puri, uh, since in your first response, you, you spoke about how, you know, there is uh, uh, an, an urgent need and an importance also vis-a-vis -vis, uh, more, uh, you know, elaborate partnership uh, in, in, in the field of technology as well. Uh, there, if you could give us a bit of a more overview in terms of what is exactly uh, uh, the situation there and what are we looking at when we're talking about, uh, you know, more deeper collaborations uh, in the field of technology with the European Union? Uh, Vishal, let's uh, be very clear on one thing. The European Union is India's largest investor. And whenever monies need to be mobilized for investing in India, the European capital is one of the best sources and those that have invested in the past and therefore have demonstrated success. Let us turn around and look at the streets of Delhi. When you look at the automotive sector, who are the largest investors, other than the Japanese and the Koreans, it's the Germans, mm -hmm. isn't it? Who are the largest investors in, who have been the largest investors in the past in several other areas? If we are looking at aerospace manufacturing, it is coming from the Europeans. If we look at several other areas, all areas of technological innovation. It's coming from there. Let me also look at COVID. You know, I'm of course stretching this European Union to include Britain, but India is very happy at the fact that this vaccine called COVID Shield was manufactured in India, but it is actually a European vaccine. It was developed by AstraZeneca. The vaccine that we really wanted to have is Pfizer, which was developed in Germany. You know, these are the realities of life. And Germany, and in fact, Europe, this includes Spain, which is a great railroads manufacturer, for example, great in the building strength, for example. Germany, which is an industrial powerhouse. France, I don't think I need to say anything. I can just use the word Raphael. Indeed. And I think that should answer all the questions. Nuclear power. Look at Italy, what it has done in terms of water management, heritage management. You know, these are the countries from where both technology as well as innovation investment willingness in insofar as India is concerned, all of these things come. And energy and so security as well. Institutional arrangement, which is in terms of an investment agreement is very important. You know, we used to have a number of investment uh, protection agreements with European countries. These were all abrogated by us some years back. They need to be replaced by a treaty, which will, you know, guarantee a kind of modicum of protection to investments. And that is very important for all European countries and would be, again, a very welcome sign. That is why I would like to underscore very strongly economics. Economics includes trade, it includes money, it includes climate change, it includes energy, and it includes finance, innovation, and technology. And I think the European Union is perhaps the partner with whom there is a degree of comfort in the Indian establishment and Indian business. Okay, okay. But, but uh, you know, Ambassador Puri, uh, one, uh, since we're in the last leg of the discussion, one aspect uh, which all three of you referred to earlier, that is uh, the geopolitical situation. If we have to, you know, juxtapose the needs of both sides uh, when we're talking about uh, the economic aspect and also the, the real world geopolitical situation there, how do you see things moving from here onwards? Because it, it is going to be really important as to how both sides are going to, uh, you know, view each other's uh, perspective and interest as well vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the geopolitical happenings. Oh, uh, uh, Vishal, if that was directed at me, let me make this point once again. There was COVID. What did COVID really do? It's a code word for the rise of China and coming in the eyes of the Western public from thinking of China as a benign rise, as a case of market for us, etc., at least the people asked, started asking the question, yes, there's money to be made with China, but, and that but is important. India, on the other hand, was a, let me say, far behind mm -hmm. in all of this. The EU-China trade is somewhere in the region of $500 billion. We're not even touching 100 billion. 
So, you know, there's a world of a difference. Despite the comfort, despite our heritages, despite commonalities of democracy, etc. This is a relationship which needs to be taken forward and taken forward rapidly. Okay. So the China angle is particularly important because it tells the Europeans that, look, there is the possibility of another economy, another society with whom we have much in common, but perhaps we need to walk the talk a bit more. They also need to walk the talk a bit more. And it will take time. It's not going to happen tomorrow or day after at all. Our infrastructure is nowhere there. Our ability to deliver is nowhere there. But there is a possibility, and this is a possibility which should not remain only on the books of diplomats, authors, and journalists, mm -hmm. but should become possibilities for those who do economic planning and those who are in the real world of business and who realize that this is particularly important. Let okay. me also say something about supply chains, which is something which has come into focus in the context of COVID. So what kind of a manufacturing base does India offer? We would like to manufacture ourselves, but we offer a benign and a friendly investment base from where supply chains would be shorter to Europe and supply chains would be such that they would find themselves amenable to standards which are dictated by Europe and become remain acceptable to them. Okay. All in all, a time of opportunity. Okay, a time for opportunity there. Uh, the question, Alicia, is that uh, is uh, the European Union, uh, you know, uh, willing to go ahead and capitalize on those opportunities. What's the sense you're getting there? I'm asking this because every time we're talking about economy, trade, commerce, as Ambassador Puri is also referring to, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, huge opportunity there when you're looking at India as, as a market, as an economy, as an economic partner. Well, I think Europe has learned the lesson of uh, being too slow on trade deals. Mercosur, 20 years, India, we missed the opportunity in 2012. And why is it different now from our side? Uh, what, what what happened then? I mean, literally peanuts. I mean, it, it was about um, visas, uh, you know, like like India was asking, uh, you know, uh, uh, an easier arrangement for, for talent to work in Europe. I mean, these Today, these issues, if you if you look at what's happening, yeah, Europe is has basically uh, accepted five million refugees just in, 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 in two months. I mean, you know what I mean? Like Europe is changing. Europe mm -hmm. is now thinking big and, and not because I, I don't want to say that just to brag about Europe or anything. It's because out of need. That's what I want to highlight. OK, because Europe now has realized that it needs strategic uh, partnerships that are large enough to be relevant. We have uh, trade deals with Singapore, with Japan, with South Korea, but these are not complementary economies. Sorry to say, as I mean, they may be to some extent, but not like India. Okay. India is in a way the new China for us. We need a new China. Um, so I, I'm just saying, Europe will not make the, the same mistakes of looking at detailed stuff and avoid or miss such an opportunity of this negotiation. So I th that's why I'm quite optimistic uh, about it. Okay, okay. Quick concluding comments, a 60 second from you, Dr. Panda, before we bring this discussion to an end in terms of the complementary nature of relationship as both uh, Ambassador Puri and Alicia are referring to. Oh, yes. I think there is a huge scope in terms of taking forward the EU-India partnerships. I think one critical area is... Uh, the connectivity and the infrastructure development. Today, if we talk about EU's approach, they have a global gateway strategy. That's a 300 billion euro uh, gateway strategy. And where is it going to be invested? And it is, it is going to focus on Indo-Pacific with a focus on India, with a focus on India's strategic partners in Asia, that is Japan and all. So okay. I think uh, in terms of sustainable partnership, in terms of climate neutrality, in terms of free trade talks, there is a huge, you know, uh, exchange and cooperation can happen. And most importantly, this uh, framework of cooperation is not happening on one side. This is happening on a comprehensive range of area. And that is what uh, the good thing about EU-India relationship today. Okay. And particularly this consensus is emerging when the global climate, security climate has, uh, you know, uh, is been changing because of the uh, ukraine Russia war. And both EU and India have started thinking autonomously that here, uh, is a partnership which needs to be strengthened and okay. taking it uh, 
to its logical conclusion and taking it forward. Okay, okay, there it is. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Panda, Ambassador Puri, as well as Alicia for sharing your views and insight with us and our viewers. As our uh, experts were pointing out clearly, there is a lot of potential, a lot of scope when we're talking about uh, taking the India-EU relationship to the next level, specifically looking at the economic aspect, the trade and commerce. Uh, of course, a focus on infrastructure, technology as well. And uh, let's not forget the geopolitical situation also seems to be driving both sides uh, towards this conclusion that uh, both uh, are complementary to each other in terms of taking this relationship uh, to the next level. We'll keep a watch on uh, all the developments here and keep on bringing uh, the detailed analysis to you. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.